Boy, is it ever. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Rush Limbaugh, the TV show, day 104 of The Raw Deal. I must tell you, my friends, I'm here tonight fighting fatigue. I was in Washington over the weekend. I played football Sunday afternoon uh, after being up until 4 in the morning Saturday night. And uh, that was up late Monday night, or Sunday night, because I'm working on my new book, and I had to do a chapter for the paperback version of The Way Things Ought to Be, which is coming out in September. So, But nevertheless, I'm here, because I'm dedicated to pursuit of excellence. I'm here, and if I hadn't told you I was fighting fatigue, you would never know it. You wait, you'll see. Here's what we have tonight. The President of the United States had some comments about me. This is probably how he feels today. Um, <laughs> He had some comments about me Saturday night at the White House Correspondents' Dinner in reference to something we did on this show last Thursday night, Friday, depending on when you see it. It was a confrontation between this man, John Conyers, and this woman, Janet Reno, the Attorney General. We'll play you the entire segment from last Thursday's show, uh, comments that I made beforehand, comments I made after it, then play you what the President said about it. Saturday night at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Then we'll play you what the President said at the White House Correspondents' Dinner about this man, Kansas Senator Bob Dole, an out-and-out -out lie, uh, as Dole says in a fax that he put out today, an out-and-out -out misrepresentation of Senator Dole's attempt to access some public funds. Now, before we get to all that, we have a couple things to do. We always do here in what we call our A segment. We're going to start out, ladies and gentlemen, by revealing to you the secret of the trying game. One of the things that I have been impressed by, one of the things I haven't been impressed, I've, I've noticed, in every instance when you ask somebody, hey, how do you think President Clinton is doing? There seems to be this universal comment, well, he's trying. I mean, he's really trying hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we have some footage from uh, a man on the street interviews that we've done on, uh, on this program before. This last week we showed you, so you're going to see some of this stuff again because you've seen it before, but again the question was, uh, this is the 100 days report card we asked people to grade him, and here are just some sample responses. Take a look. Can you tell me what he's done so far? Uh, not very much, but he's surely trying. Uh... <laughs> I don't think he's accomplished too much, but he's trying very hard. He's definitely tried to address more issues than uh, George Bush did. I think he's trying. Yeah, did you have about that? He's definitely trying to address more issues than George Bush did. Hey, look, I, w w effort is a fine thing, but let's not confuse effort with success. And let's not confuse effort with the right thing. I mean, if you go to the bank and somebody doesn't want to give you all the money you've written a check for, and they're trying real hard not to give you what's yours. Are you going to sit there and applaud their effort for trying not to give you what's yours? I and mean, if somebody tries to break into your house and they're real creative about it, and they really find a great way and they're trying real hard to get in and steal your stuff, are you going to sit there and say, you're doing a great job? And that's what this administration, they're planning on raising your taxes. They're planning on in, in, hitting you with a health care plan that you don't have the slightest idea how much it's going to cost you. But he, and he's trying real hard to do that. Now, is, th is that worth any credit? Just these, you gotta, folks, it is this kind of assessment that you get from me. It is, it is this kind of analysis, this kind of unique ability to spot the salient aspects of something that make me truly valuable to you people. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Did you notice? Did you notice the delayed reaction of the audience? Oh, I can't believe he said that. <laughs> so, should, should we applaud now? Do you think? <laughs> See, I told you people before we started. There are no signs here. There are no signs. We think you are wise enough to know when to applaud. And so far, you are not showing us. <laughs> just no, no. Just see. Now, one more, one more thing here. The economy, as you know, the GDP, 4.8% uh, in December, up, going really high. And Clinton and Gore said, hey, it's because people have a lot of hope. They can't wait for us to be inaugurated and change in America and all that. Well, that's true. Maybe I'll grant that there can be some euphoria attached to change. It's exciting. So now, change has happened. What happens? People get up every day. And what do they hear? the latest new novel tax increase this administration's trying or thinking about. 
And as such, if you make 40, 50, 000, whatever you make, if you make any amount of money at all, and you hear about this tax here and that tax there and that tax over there and that tax back there, what are you going to do? You're going to hold on to what you got. You don't know how much it's going to cost you. So nobody's spending any money again. He has succeeded in shutting down the economy. If you don't believe this, watch this. Now, this, this is going to be tough to hear, and we have superimposed some graphics here for to help you. But last Thursday, the president met with small business leaders. Our cameras were there when they came out of the meeting. Our microphones were live. We caught the comments of those as they came out with their, this is their original first impressions of the meeting as they're exiting. Watch this very closely. Listen up. Oh, he answered absolutely no awful. questions. I saw rhetoric about that tied us in with a... Uh, There they are. I mean, folks. Not... Those are the people. Those are the people who make the country work. That's small business. They employ 75% of the people who work in this country, and they came out of a meeting going, oh, two, oh. All right. The um, President of the United States, some say, accused me or called me a racist on Saturday night. We'll show you what all the hubbub's about. No, no, no. We'll show you what all the hubbub's about after the break. Don't go away. We made Ziggy, it's a great cartoon. Look at that. Rush Limbaugh, next 3,000 miles. <laughs> Boy, that's true, too. Radio audience is going through the roof. We're up to 600 stations. 18 million people a week tune in. 4.6 million any one time. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much. All right. Now, we got to go here. we got to go. We have a... We have a lot to do in this segment, and, and it's, a lot of it is really already done. We need to go back to last Thursday night. Take a look at this. Uh, uh, just and watch it and listen to it very carefully. This is John Conyers versus Janet Reno congressional hearing over the Waco invasion, and we're going to just roll the tape from the show as it aired Thursday night with my comments leading in and my comments leading out. Now watch this because after this we'll then flash forward to Saturday night, two days later, as the president of the United States tries to make a joke about me and this segment. So roll the tape, Chet, and take a look, folks. Well, the hearings began on Wednesday afternoon about what we did in Waco and why. John Conyers is an angry Democrat from Michigan, and he decided to try to make a name for himself by taking on the Attorney General Janet Reno. This is a full two-minute clip, but it's just amazing. You don't see this happen much. Uh, when a Democrat is talking to a Democrat or Republican to Republican, these people are from the same party. This is amazing. Take a look. You did the right thing by offering to resign. You did exactly the right thing. And now I'd like you to know that there is at least one member in the Congress that isn't going to rationalize the death of two dozen children that weren't cultists, they weren't nuts, they weren't criminals. They happened to be the parents of people and they were innocently trapped in there. I haven't tried to rationalize the death of children, Congressman. I feel more strongly about it than you will ever know. But I have neither tried to rationalize the death of four ATF agents. And I will not walk away from a compound where ATF agents have been killed by people who knew they were agents and leave them unsurrounded. I will not authorize a military excursion with the forces of the military into that compound with a direct assault such as what you might expect in a military situation. I will stand by and be proud of the FBI as it used its restraint. But most of all, Congressman, I will not engage in recrimination. I will look to the future, try to learn everything I can from this situation to avoid tragedies such as this in the future. Are you concluded? 
I'm not concluded if you have further questions of me, sir. Well, I consider that a non-responsive answer. You did not ask me a question, sir. You asked me if I had any comment, and well, I, I responded with my... I non-responsive comments. Do you have a question of me, sir? I have more questions of you than I'll ever get time to put before you. I am you prepared for as long as you would like to question me, sir, and well, I will come to your office. Well, ask the to give me some more time. I will come to your office and be prepared to answer any question at any time that you may ever have about anything that I have ever done. Well, I'll, I'll thank the gentlelady and accept her invitation. Put this woman in charge of the Bosnian operation now. Man, oh man, I've Conyers got an axe to grind there. And uh, how many of you, I just want to get a quick sample. <clears throat> Who, do you, you think he was rude? Yes. You do. Whether she did the right or wrong thing, was she rude? Okay. She was not rude, but he was. Right. Okay. Now, do you think that because she's a woman and he's a man and you're not supposed to mistreat the woman, or was it just his attitude? Yeah, I thought he was rude, too. I, I thought it was unnecessary. He's grandstanding. And <clears throat> are you concluded? What is that? Sounds like a disease. <laughs> Are you concluded? I don't know, Congressman, let me call my doctor. Now let's flash forward two days. Saturday, last Saturday, Washington, D.C., the White House Correspondents' Dinner at the Washington Hilton, the President near the beginning of his remarks, which are customary at these affairs. I've been called too fat by Rush Limbaugh. Do you like the way Rush took up for Janet Reno the other night on his program? He only did it because she was attacked by a black guy. <laughs> He's here, isn't he? Now, rewind that back there, Chet, because I want to I wanna show people that again. Uh, I have, uh, w w when the evening was over, I had a number of people, people that you know, and I'm not going to identify here because I failed to get their position or, or permission, but they are prominent journalists in Washington. Many of them would be proud to be identified as liberal, who came to me after the uh, evening was over and said, you can't let the President of the United States get away with calling you a racist like that. You can't do it. Why, you've got to demand a public apology. You cannot let him get away with that. Uh, and, and I uh, have not and, and do not intend to demand uh, a public apology because I don't think I would get one, and I'd rather do it a different way. I want you to watch this clip uh, one more time, just so it's saying. And remember now, folks, there's not one reference by me to the race of John Conyers at all. Not one reference. And we didn't choose that clip because he's black. We chose that clip because of the confrontational aspects of it. It is Bill Clinton, a man of the politically correct liberal wing of the Democratic Party who often accuse people of being politically incorrect when they do what he did. He injected race into this. And I want you to watch this again. Here's the clip. And I've been so called too fat by Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> do you like the way Rush took up for Janet Reno the other night on his program? He only did it because she was attacked by a black guy. <laughs> He's here, isn't he? Black guy. This is a member of the United States Congress that he's talking about, from a member of his own party, John Conyers. Now, here's what I do want to do, ladies and gentlemen. By, by the, fi the fat comment, I've never even called him fat. All I did was point out the reason they're having trouble getting investors for the jogging track is investors want to see results. He's been jogging for two years. <laughs> And there haven't, there aren't too many results. But I don't care about that. I, I really, that, that's inconsequential to me. That's, that's, that's the big leagues. Uh, but I would, President Clinton, I know you're watching now. Uh, and, and I would like to apologize to you, sir. I would like to apologize for daring to come to the defense of a white member of your cabinet. I should have known knowing the cultural views of you and people in your administration. I should have known that to defend a white person in a confrontation with a black person is automatically racist. Automatically racism. And therefore, I wish to pledge to you that never ever again will I objectively analyze the performance of members of your administration, particularly white members, because to defend them 
is now racism. And I do not wish to be accused of racism by anyone, especially the President of the United States. Uh, we'll be back with the rest of our show right after this. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh, the doctor of democracy, here serving humanity on TV. Now, a couple more things about this. We went through this routine early today on the radio. We played the audio of the Conyers-Reno clip and the president's response and, uh, and, and my response to that. And so there's been some interest expressed, finally, by some members of the press. And I talked to one reporter this afternoon who was sort of admonishing me. Oh, come on, Rush, it's just a joke. And I said, yeah, just a joke. Racism's not a joke. Imagine the joke having been made about you. Or imagine me, Rush Limbaugh, being the entertainment for the evening, being up there at the podium, and during my presentation, making some crass comment about the president being a racist, even though it was a joke. You people would banner headline it on the front page, Limbaugh insults president, and there would be all kinds of calls for my firing and my, ban my, 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 uh, my banishment from from the media uh, because of the insensitivity and the unawareness and the callousness of this. So don't hit me with this double standard. Don't let him out of this. He was just trying to make it. He's the president of the United States. And when they start whispering this racism stuff, and they hope this little pebble of racism keeps rolling and turns into a big stone and finally a boulder, it can do damage if it sticks. Uh, as, as tense as race relations are in this country, and presidential words have uh, a lot of weight. So I, I don't intend to just throw this out uh, with, with a bad joke. This was written. They had a chance to review this and say, you know, this is, may not, we should throw this out. They didn't. They decided to, uh, to stick with it. So I stand by my interpretation of it, and I, and I stand by my analysis of it. Uh, I'll get a quick break here. We'll be back with one final funny little thing that you'll just love. So stay with us. Don't go away. <laughs> thing. I would think black people would be offended by this. I mean, after all, here's the president of the United States, the man leading the banner for political correctness, the man who represents this new administration where they care more, and they love more, and they understand more. They have more compassion. They have more uh, ability to relate. And here he just casually throws off this, she was being attacked by a black guy. And think of the words, attacked by a black guy. What's wrong with defending somebody being attacked, period, by anybody? And yet a joke was made at my expense about it. Ah, well, I, um, it's over and done with. And as I say, Mr. President, I apologize for daring to be objective and uh, analyze your administration on the merits. I'll never do it again. Now, uh, <laughs> teach you a lesson. Folks, folks, this is from Meet the Press two Sundays ago. This is such an education. Ross Perot being grilled by R.W. Johnny Apple of the New York Times. Perot is making the point that if you're going to have infrastructure pro projects, such as building a bridge, you build a bridge where it's needed. You don't build a bridge just in some congressman's district in order to pay the congressman back or to grease the congressman for future votes. Perot, yeah, you build a bridge where it's needed. Otherwise, you don't. Now watch this extreme. Watch this extreme. Watch this member of the press defending pork and attacking Perot. Watch, watch this. This is fascinating civics lesson. Is, is the bridge needed? Period. Put it, sure. Now let's... But that doesn't have anything to do with the way government works in this country, in Britain, in Japan, or on Mars. You need those votes. You don't want gridlock. Aren't you going to have to accommodate those people a little no, bit? No, no. <laughs> want to see that again? Can we? Can, let me. I want to show you that again, if you can, if we can, if we can roll, if we have time. I think we do. If you could rewind that. I mean, that isn't how government works. The only thing missing out of that, that isn't how government works, Mr. Perot. You fool! Don't you understand? We don't build things where they're needed. We build them to pay back congressmen. And here I am, a member of the press, in favor of that. 
Now we don't have enough time to play that for you again, but I'll tell you, that's going to be in our highlight reel, and, and we're going to show you that because, you know, th this is just another example of how inside the Beltway thinking is so out of touch with the way you have to live your life and the things you think are important. I'm uh, happy you spent some time with us tonight. Mr. President, sleep tight. <laughs> Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Rush Limbaugh's wardrobe by Rochester, big and tall. Tonight at 8, take a stand for justice with Elliot Ness and the Untouchables. Then at 10, find out how much your world has changed today on Real News. And now, the Montel Williams Show is coming up next right here on Channel 13. If you'd like to order a video cassette of Rush's TV show for only $24.95, just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. For a transcript, send $5 to Burrell's Transcripts, Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. Or call 1-800-777-TEXT.